recently in that way at Lincoln Center um, I definitely thought I was in public space I was uh, arrested by a bunch of plainclothes cops who thought I was the leader of the protest I mean I sort of was but they were conflating trespassing with protesting they're innocent of the First Amendment they have no idea the NYPD shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right to peaceably assemble to protest. Amen. 45 words, five freedoms. They've got to have that at the police academy. That's got to be up front. Meanwhile, since it isn't, we should follow the advice of that great, great revolutionary Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot the Abbey Hoffman of his time, you have to go in the park, you Jesus have to of Nazareth. One or the other. Amen. You cannot stand there. You have to go in the park. Okay, you have to keep moving. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to keep moving. Be careful. That's the guy that just roughed up that woman right here. For the this guy, be careful. He just roughed up that last woman right here. That guy is trying to roughed up that woman. shops and so forth and so on and then and then sure enough here comes the police person and then my wife would come in as my hand was on the cash register and I was asking the mysterious creator of all life to intercede uh, my wife would come in and say Billy you said you wouldn't do this anymore get away from that cash register and suddenly the, the police would freeze because the government of their own marriages is stronger in their emotional life than their local jurisdiction their local you know captain at the precinct like this white shirted guy just bossing us around here so Savitri who's a trained actress has gotten very good at this so it's, it she's had the ability to slow down and find... This is your wife? Yes. What's her name? Savitri. S-A-V-I-T-R-I. So she has the ability to open up a theatrical space inside of an arrest. Ooh. And that's, well, that's, that's nothing that the civil rights, the Greensboro Four, and James Farmer in Chicago, and all the civil rights... Uh, all the, uh, we've, learned, we've learned so much from the civil rights movement, which is kind of a, the high watermark of, of slowing down oppressive laws and their enforcement and opening up new stages where people can communicate. That's what we have to, we're trying fear. to do here without fear. And in our case, you know, we've got a, you know, the, the Earth Aaliyah gospel choirs right there. We, we try to have music and humor, and sometimes that helps, you know. I live out, I live out in Windsor Terrace, Brooklyn, and you know these are family guys. They, they have families. They're my neighbors. They have a sense of humor. They love music. <laughs> Your heart will break like mine. You want me only after you go.
assemblies are very, very interesting. The general assemblies, uh, you know, they've taken our bullhorns away from us, right? I didn't they've taken our bullhorns away from us, and so we repeat what the speaker says. So the speaker says, mic check, and we all shout, mic check! And then a hundred people have shouted, mic check, and we like establish that everybody's cooperating. And then you can have hundreds and hundreds of people, and they all hear, at number one police plaza, we had several thousand people, maybe 3,000, I don't know how many. Were you there? I was there, no. Well, I would say, the First Amendment! The First Amendment! The First Amendment, it would repeat three or four times and go all the way, like a city block away, you would hear the echoes of the communication, you know? So that's not been invented here, by any means. Uh, they did that in jail in uh, Seattle, in the WTO in 99. Was that in yep. November of 99? It goes all the way back. It goes all the way back to labor and, and women and civil rights. It's not brand new, but they have them every evening here, the GAs. The General Assemblies are striking to me. Central democracy at work. Everything gets voted on. Wait, wait. Consensual what? Democracy. <laughs> what does that mean? What I know. Mean? What is consensual, consensual democracy? What the hell does Come that on. mean? Come on. <laughs> we, live, we live in a democracy, right? I don't feel Actually, consensual. Oh. We don't. We live in a public. We live in a consumer <laughs> democracy where money is buying things. Over, they're starting a new government here, uh, and it's very exciting to be a part of it. It's, you see the gestation of the democratic practice at its most basic, and you see kids in their twenties, a lot of them, coming out of college with a hundred thousand dollars on their credit cards and no possible prospect of a job. That describes a certain percentage of the people here. Now there's more and more diversity. Just met the uh, Mr. Samuelson, Samuelson from one of the big unions. There's more diversity now. May I ask you? Just good. a little bit different in New York City because I've been here for more than 10 years and after a while you get sort of a, a certain, uh, you become a New York character. In a sense, public space is just that. In a totalizing environment, uh, public space is a place that is a little less intensely corporate. They'll try to, they'll try to sponsor everything now in public space. All the activities that the corporations try to put get their logo on there, and the and uh, the rent a cops and and the rent a cops work for the local business improvement district. The business district has wealthy people on it, and, and you know they're trying to crush public space and that's why this is so important one of the reasons many reasons that this is so important is it's the it's the it's the reinvigoration of public space of course it's right in the shadow of of uh, of these modernist slabs with their financial instruments up in airless vaults so it's it's great that it's here uh, in this particular place but but public space in New York City uh, that's been that's been the the Rip and Billy project for a long, long time. We spent a lot of time in Union Square trying to re, trying to re, re, revive in people's memories Paul Ropes and Norman Thomas and Dorothy Day and Emma Emma Goldman and you know all the people uh, making the 40-hour week possibly possible. Yeah, creating the weekend concept. The weekend concept, the eight-hour day that. concept. Yeah. Not that those concepts have apply anymore. <laughs> 
they I kind of lost you. their. I dropped you, Reverend. I know I did. That was painful. <laughs> Media is just an extension, physically an extension of me. Making me laugh right now. Well, I'm not Please paying for You're making me yeah, yeah. now. I'm trying this to negotiate. This is, this is tragic. I, I'm, I'm, I know it's tragic. tragic. That's why I'm asking you for a job. <laughs> the devil! <laughs>